All right, so this video is going to talk about how to do some calculations within your queries themselves without having to actually involve your um, visual basic code too much. So you can actually uh, do calculations, you know, auto automate calculations through your query and have them say displayed side by side next to other um, fields in the actual know data grid view or something like that or just have it come automatically calculated from the query without having to set up the code to calculate it yourself and then populate a label with it yourself or something like that it, it makes it super super helpful to just you know do those queries define define the calculation for one single row or record in a query and then just let the uh, actual fill and get methods handle this for you. So that's what we're looking at. Uh, I'll just be covering everything in the apply section for this chapter. So I want to talk about a calculated field, which is sort of like a new field added to a data set. But the data itself in a calculated field is not given, like not stored in the database that the data set is based off of, right? It's actually um, populated by the result of some calculation, as if you had a column in Excel whose value was the result of a formula. It's a very similar idea. Um, it's going to involve one or more of the data set's existing fields, rather than actually just being defined manually in the database itself. So yeah, these calculated fields, they're not stored in the database. They're just calculated every single time the data set is actually accessed. You can think of it as being a little bit similar to in chapter 11, how we were able to build a query that sort of used the relation to add the actual name of the country into the salesperson table rather than having the country code um, field in there. So it got rid of the country code and it went through the relation to get the country name based on the country code rather than, yeah, but but like the, the country name itself wasn't stored in the database in that table. It said it was uh, put in our, um, it, it, it was uh, stored as the result of our query from the data set. So that's sort of a similar idea of what's going on here. All right, so what I have right here is a uh, schema file for uh, the beginnings of an application that is going to, um, handle some sales calculations from a database. So we have this sales table. Uh, the primary key is the month, and then um, we have three cities as fields. So these are going to be the sales in Jacksonville, the sales in Miami, and the sales in Tampa. And the idea is that we want to actually have a fourth column in here that is the total sales from all three of these cities. Uh, so that, that's what we're going to uh, strive for with this first part right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click um, this fill.getData area. I'm going to right click this default uh, query that is given to us. I don't want to add a new query in here. I want to modify the existing default query. So I'll go in and hit configure once I right click it. And right here we have a you know, our, our enter the SQL statement part. Um, I'll pull up the query builder because I want to show you a couple of ways of doing what I'm about to do. All right, so I'm in the query builder. Um, now you can either uh, type in what I'm about to type in in the, uh, the actual SQL part of the query builder, or you can uh, put this in the columns. But essentially what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make a new field uh, that is the result of the calculation of a few other fields. Um, what I'll do is I'll, let's see. I'll do it this way. Um, I will put in the column name first. So the column name, uh, you know, the column name here is Tampa, Miami, Jacksonville, month, which is the primary key, right? Um, those column names are already set, but instead of doing a column name like that, instead I'm going to um, type in Jacksonville 
plus Miami plus oh one sec plus uh let's see Jacksonville plus Miami plus Tampa I accidentally hit tab or something like that that's my bad um and then the alias right here because who would want to look at this ugly name as a table right like in a table right that that would be awful so the alias right here is going to be total or the the total sales um and down here you can see that our select statement the um the actual fields have changed from or like to include yeah you know, we have all the original ones and then it includes jacksonville plus miami plus tampa as total this as keyword right here uh, basically says that we're using total as an alias for Jacksonville plus Miami plus Tampa. So we can display the name total in our actual tables that we're putting out, or I can reference the name table in, sorry, total in code. Um, I can do anything like that. And SQL will understand that this total means the, the uh, calculated value column right here the calculated value field of jacksonville plus miami plus tampa but that's all you have to do either you type in jacksonville plus miami plus tampa as total or you come up to the query builder here under column you put jacksonville plus miami plus tampa and under alias you put down total either one of those methods will work it does the same thing and you can execute the query right here we have all of these figures for all of these cities right here, and we have the total, which is the, um, you know, the sum of all the previous ones. It is a read-only field, as you can possibly see with this um, notice down here. Uh, but actually, let's see. Type in my own value: seven, three, five, eight. And then this um, total column down here becomes 3 plus 5 plus 8, which is 8 plus 8, which is 16. So that's handled automatically for you, which is super nice. Um, that's a really nice feature of uh, SQL right here, is that we can not only have this uh, calculated table right here, but then also like use the alias total. Because if I didn't put an alias... Um, well, actually, you have to put an alias as a thing when it comes, because this column is an expression. So you have to put an alias. Um, otherwise, it will be completely empty. And also, you won't be able to refer to that data at all if it doesn't have an alias. So you, you do actually have to have one. But yeah. And then uh, don't you don't have to worry about this uh, part as well. The, uh, the table column there, you just put that in the column and that is the alias just like that all right so i've hit okay in the t in the query builder you can see my finalized query right here i'll go to next and it will ask me about the same um it will ask me about all the the same stuff before which uh what i'm going to do is i'm not going to change any of this we are updating the default query so we're not changing fill, we're not changing get data because we want it to function just the same way. So I'll just hit um, next like that. Everything looks good. I can hit finish. And now we'll see that the uh, total field has shown up. It's like a pseudo field. It's not an actual field from the database, but it is a uh, pseudo field in the data set that acts like a field. All right, and this is the result of um, when we take the table and we drag it into the data grid view uh, on the application. This is what we end up getting. Uh, you know, everything ed editing and adding and deleting is all disabled and all that. And we just have all of our regular fields from the data set or the database as well as our calculated field from the um, total right here. So that is. Super neat. All right, so the next thing I want to add 
are these um, labels right here, which show the total sales for each city. And normally what we might do is go into code, run a for loop or something like that, and add up all these total values and stick them in our labels. But we can actually do that um, using SQL. We can have it uh, work automatically for us using what's known as an aggregate function. So let's uh, talk about how to use some of those. So in SQL, the aggregate functions are functions that return a single value from a group of values. They kind of aggregate all these values together and do some calculations to get one particular value out of them. We have average to get the average of values in a group, uh, count, which returns the number of values in a group, max is the maximum value of a group, min is the minimum value of some group, and sum is the sum of values in a group. So we have all of those at our disposal. All right, so the way we're going to add this into our project is we're actually going to create a new um, table adapter entirely, one that will uh, just focus on handling these aggregate functions for the totals of each, um, each city. So we'll have this default uh, select statement right here you know, the, the sale, from the sales table adapter, that'll just handle the uh, all of that kind of stuff specifically for all the sales and all that, but um, we're going to have a new table adapter and its entire purpose is just going to be working on getting us those uh, values, those um, aggregate function based values that we talked about before. So we're essentially going to use the sum aggregate function in order to get these particular values. So. Let's get into that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, right click on some empty area here, go to add and add a new uh, table adapter. And we have all of this stuff. Um, if we go to, just go to Ellington con uh, connection string right here, we can just use this same connection. We don't need to make a new one. Um, come down and hit next. Uh, we will, use SQL statements. And then we have what data should be loaded into the table. Um, so this is where we're actually going to uh, add in our aggregate functions right here. What I'll do is, I'm not gonna worry about the query builder right now. I'll just do uh, select sum of uh, Jacksonville as a uh, total jack sum of Miami as total Miami and sum of Tampa as total Tampa from dbo.sales And let's see, select some Jacksonville as total Jack, some Miami as total Miami, some Tampa as total Tampa. From DBO sales, we'll hit next. We have our um, fill methods right here. I'll do fill by store to really help differentiate uh, these from the default sales table adapter methods. Uh, so get data by store like that. Uh, and we're not going to actually it doesn't even give us the option to create methods and all that because um, of the fact that we're working with these aggregate functions. The aggregate functions, we can't actually update the results of aggregate functions. All we can do is update the um, fields and stuff directly, but we're not working with fields and stuff directly in this table adapter. All we're getting is the aggregate results. So there's no need, there's, there wouldn't even be any ability for us to update stuff to the database. So we're not going to worry about that. Um, go to the wizard results. Everything looks good. And then we will finish. Um, I will right click uh, this data table one right there. Uh, rename that to store. And then data one table adapter, I will rename to store table adapter just like that. Um, move that up there.
right? Uh, and then come down here, store node right there in the data sources. This gives us this total Jack, total Miami, total Tampa thing, which would allow us to start binding controls to these, which is exactly what we want. So let's get into it. All right, so now that I have this uh, store table adapter and all of these you know, properly created, I can just add them to the application very easily by clicking and dragging each aggregate uh, you know, field into the proper label, uh, just like that. And you'll see the store binding source and store table adapter are now in this zone. And in main form.vb, we have, oh, duplicate cone, but we have um, all of that in our form main. So should be able to hit start. And just like that, we have these uh, total sales figures at the bottom for each of the uh, cities that are in consideration for this data set. Now, the last thing that would be really nice to do is to make these sales figures actually look like currency, right? Well, luckily for us, it is super easy to do that. We don't even really have to modify any code. So let's look at how that's done. All right, so what we're going to do for each of these labels is I'm going to um, click this uh, first one right here, label Jacksonville, and I'll scroll up to the top of the properties window. I'll go down to data bindings. Um, there should be an ellipses for advanced right here. And we now have this whole window where we can start talking about the formatting of things. And this is possible, by the way, because we have, you know, this data bindings right here, it's bound to um, the store binding source total Jacksonville um, thing right here. It's bound, specifically bound to this uh, store binding source. The text comes from the query that we just made. And what we're doing here is we're coming down to this data binding and we're formatting how the binding actually shows up. So we're formatting the text itself. That's why we can do that here. That's that's the way, the, you know, you only want to do this kind of thing when we're working with data bound to a particular label. You don't want to do that with normal labels that you're working with in code. You would want to do that kind of stuff in code, but here it's fine. So we'll go down to currency, make sure that there are two decimal places. Uh, actually, no, we'll hit zero decimal places here um then hit okay and close it and if i run it like this take a second you'll see that over here we have this properly formatted like currency without decimal places though but otherwise like the comma and the decimal uh, the dollar sign and all that while the other two are not and you can just simply repeat the same steps in order to do that for the other two labels. So that'll just make it look really nice. All right, well, that is queries and calculations. Um, that's how you can just super easily use a query to make calculations like this without having to go in and run for loops and all that kind of stuff with your own code. You don't need to worry about that. You can just have it done automatically for you. Now, you'll want to do separate uh, table um, table adapters, like what I showed here, where you create a new one for these like aggregate functions. Um, every When you're doing an aggregate function like this, where you're flattening all, like the entirety of a column into one value, you want to do a separate one, a separate table adapter, than the one that just looks at every records value in that column. So what we had here, we had the default one look at every records value in that column, and then it like uh, did the calculations with it and all that, but it was still going record by record, whereas the aggregate functions collapsed a, a, uh, a, an entire field into one value. So it like, flattened everything into one row, essentially. And because of that, we wouldn't want to combine it in with the other stuff. We would want to have it in its own table adapter so that it can handle everything by itself. Otherwise it starts to look real awkward. So that's my recommendation for you there. But yeah, that's how we can 
work with uh, queries in order to get more power out of our data sets.